What do you say there, Benny? You ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are working on Benny's 1959 Buick Electra. That's right. We're going to be putting in a hydraulic system from Hoppo's Hydraulics. Um, it's going to be a two pump setup. This whole video will be the install of a two pump four battery hydraulic system yep. in the 1959 Buick. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's do it. It's going to be a lot of work. All right, Benny, tell me about this car. I want to know how you got it and why we're doing all this. Okay, so from a young age, 59 Buick has been one of my all time favorite cars. I've tried to buy and fix a few over the years, but never had time for it. This one is from a long line of trading. It just happened to work out. It's fairly rust free, it's solid. I drove it here, I put the first 25 miles in over a decade on the car today and, and it's everything I want. It's got a nail head. It's got a fairly nice original interior. We just redid the carpet last week. It's just rough enough around the edges that it's perfect for me. <laughs> and, uh, and our boy Elio that you guys know, he also has a 1959 Buick that I did a little bit of work on when I was like 18, 19 years old. This guy bought it from the guy I did the work for, him, for on it. He did a bunch of work. Yep. Now it's just like there's 59 Buicks everywhere. We all just absolutely love this this car because this is the only car that has that face. Yeah. It's like the angry eye, super classic. It's just deadly. You got, it's got the, you know, giant wings on it. They're hard to come by in a two door. The four door that Elio's got is actually really neat though because it's got rear suicide doors that were custom done many, many years ago and uh, the post removed and it's a hard top. So super unique but um yeah really excited to get on this car like when was the last time we got to thrash on dude something like this together it's it's been it's, it's been, been way too, it's been way too long so this weekend's gonna be a total transformation man i think a bunch of people are gonna come help us with this uh build this weekend we've kind of alerted all of our friends it's recently been benny's birthday happy birthday benny thank you and uh so this is kind of like all of our friends coming together and just just getting her done so um yeah, let's get into it. What we're gonna have to do first is unload the trunk. We're gonna get a look inside, see what the layout's gonna be for the batteries and pumps. Um, we're also gonna have to go to our friend G's shop. He's a dealer for Hoppo's Hydraulics. The whole system is there. Um, I wanna shout out Hoppo's and thank them for, uh, for, for hooking us up with that because they really helped, you know, to help the customer service has been awesome. Um, they had ideas on how to how to put the setup in this car and uh, different from ours and, and sort of guided us through it. So we're gonna go pick up those pieces. We're gonna get some material and then we're gonna come back and do a full game plan. Oh, this one's different than one. This guy owns a 59 Buick, doesn't know how to open the hood. This guy never got open. <laughs> They really hit the nail on the head with that motor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We're running too bad. Why are you running so many bad? You need four. You need one bad. No. You're gonna hop this thing. Yeah. Not the 24 volts or something.
I see what you're talking about with that bridge. Yeah. Like that that's, that's where we're just, man, that's so, it's like made for hydraulics it's, already. It's made for hydraulics, 100%. That's insane. And look at these lower spring perches, they're already flat. So when we get all that off, we're gonna be able to just weld the power ball on. Well, I think we make a new perch for that. I don't trust a power ball on that little thing. Or do you? I would. You think it's fun? Well, I guess it's, it's had a spring on it the whole time. We're not trying to hop it, so. Yeah. Okay. Man. Wow. Okay, What? I guess we, we're gonna need, um, I wanna get a new hole saw for it because I wanna make sure that we're gonna be able to eat that steel up. I'm wondering, do we need a hole saw? Or are we just gonna cut the hats off and put uh, the new plates, the donuts, because they came with donuts, right? The setup. Uh, oh yeah. 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 There's there's donuts. So we could just we could just chop off the hat nicely. Oh, and just weld the donut weld the on. New donut on. Oh yeah, for sure. But and for the back, we need we need to we need to drill a hole though. We're gonna need to drill a couple holes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So we need um, two inch two inch hole saw, right? Well, see what size we, the rounds are? He, I think, or two and a quarter. I think the rams are two. Rams so, are two, yeah. So we should do like two and a half. Because we want a little bit of woggle room. You know what we need is that cruise well manufacturing those plates. Oh, yeah. Have you the, seen those? Oh, yeah. The yeah. I showed you, right? The yeah. From... yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's got those uh, little cutting board plates to keep it from squeaking. Send him before. some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love those. Yeah. Cool. I should have ordered them, but I didn't. Oh, he is cruise well. <laughs> yeah, Christian. Yeah. 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 Beautiful, beautiful work there, guys. Right? Hydro's on everything. Okay. Yeah. So we actually don't need anything down here. We don't need any different That's material. Awesome. We're just gonna do our thing, right? Yeah, it's like gonna be pretty basic, pretty easy. Leaving it torque tube. Oh, yeah. Leaving this interesting conglomeration of <laughs> engineering. I'm pretty sure that uh, some tents are made this way too. You know, when you just squish the pipe and put the bolt. That's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. Is this thing gonna even go low? <laughs> That's why you put the little wheels on it. Yeah, it'll go low. It's gonna go low. I, I, I see it's got a solid, well, you're gonna hit this first. Mm. That'll be the first thing you hit. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the store, boys. That's the setup. Hey, look at that truck. It's really, really big. Back at the shop, we just picked up the whole 
kit from uh, Neighborhood Auto Body. This is a Hoppo's hydraulics kit. Um, it's, you know, these guys really hooked us up. We've got a few different sets of cylinders to try. We've got uh, coils. I think we're only going to use, they gave us two ton coils and one ton coils, but I think we're just going to use the one ton coils in the front and then put the front coils in the rear because this is just going to be sort of a lift and lay setup. Not, we're not hopping, we're not kind of, um, it's not really a lay and play, we're just, just kind of up and down. So, check out what we got. Tons of fittings, all the lines we could, that we could ever need. We got front and back, everything. This is a totally complete kit, has everything. They gave us deep cups for the front and the back. We've got uh, the motors, the pumps. Chrome's looking beautiful. This stuff is all just super, super nice. We've got the slow downs, we've got check valves, like everything we need, and they really kind of helped us pick out what would be best for the car. So um, what we're gonna do now is, uh, because the pump um, and motors come apart, we're gonna assemble those. Basically all it is is just the little pump drive spline in there, takes this double female coupler that couples it to the motor. And uh, so we'll be able to bolt that stuff together and then decide um, what way the fittings are gonna run and all that. We're gonna definitely go over that with everybody, but uh, for now, we're just gonna assemble the pumps and start kind of mocking up what we're gonna do for a rack system in the trunk. And then we'll go over installing the cylinders in the car because it's gonna be pretty simple. This is an all coil spring car getting coil springs again. Um, so we'll show you kind of what the coil over setup is on the rear and the coil under setup is in the front. More on that in a minute. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start going through and building our rack system. We went to Metal Supermarket, got some angle iron, we got some flat bar. This is gonna be for the rack that holds two batteries on one side, two batteries on the other side, and then two pumps in the center. Something that's just be super simple, super serviceable, yeah. and uh, yeah, nice and clean. So, Ben's gonna throw the motors together. I'm gonna start laying out what the rack's gonna look like, and, uh, and we'll, we'll move on. just brushing up on our flow theory of hydraulics and kind of arguing over what way to do this kit and it was very helpful to check out Hoppo's Hydraulics YouTube channel which I'll put in the description for some technical support because they have great videos putting together their kits and explaining all the different components it's just very very helpful these guys also support the channel and have made a discount code for you guys. If you're gonna do this kind of suspension, check them out, Hoppos Hydraulics. Use the code MAKEITCUSTOM, all one word, all capital letters. You get a discount on their online store and uh, get yourself a great kit. Okay, here's the fun thing about hydraulics. There's a million ways to put them together, but they all have to do the same thing or whatever you want your setup to do. So, we've all argued about it and had our input, but we think that this is kind of the cleanest way to do the setup we we're looking to do with these pump blocks. I think it looks beauty because it's very symmetrical. This is the pressure side coming out of the pump. We've got symmetrical dumps on each side of the block. So what happens is that the pressure when the motor comes on will pressurize these lines, goes through a check valve so that it holds pressure from coming back this way and goes through to each cylinder. So we have 
This will be like a front pump, that's a rear pump, but they are identical and interchangeable. But this pressure goes through to the cylinder and the bottom of the dump, when this opens, will go through a slowdown and into the block. Um, anyway, that's it. That's how the, the pumps are gonna be set up. So now that we've kind of test fit them and had a look, we're gonna bolt them into the vise and uh, tighten everything up. Things are moving right along. A couple of gaps we got here. Yeah, Kyle's oh, make, making up the battery yeah, boxes. Well, going on. <laughs> I turned around and this front end's already apart. So the way that uh, this is gonna go in with the front, like I was saying before, it's coil under. So basically, they're gonna drill a hole in the center of the spring pocket where the shock used to be. Right in the middle of that. The cylinder is gonna go up inside. It's gonna have a uh, little bit of a donut ring to support the weight, try and, um, try and stop the weight from pushing up. And so it'll be cylinder, and then it'll have a cup underneath the cylinder that takes the spring, and the spring will be in between the cylinder cup and this lower A-arm. So all this had to come apart so that you could drill the holes and, uh, and then actually put the cylinders in. We're gonna go with six inch cylinders on the front and I believe eight inch cylinders on the back that could change. Hoppo's kind enough to send us uh, 10 inch cylinders as well in case we want to go that route. Um, like I showed you guys before, the back, it's gonna be pretty simple. Same deal, we're gonna drill a hole for the cylinder at the top and then we're gonna weld the power ball um, underneath and then actually have the coil above the cylinder. You'll see how that mounts in a minute. Word. W-W-E-R-D. What would our gloss do? He'd probably flake it. He'd flake.
<laughs> was that for acrophobiacs or for Andrew? <laughs> My name's Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I turned around and the whole car's back together in the front. Thanks a lot, bud. <laughs> you excited, Benny, or what? Oh, yeah. Update on the back. Rear shocks are pulled. The little bolts that captivate the springs are out. All that's got to happen is, what's that? You just got to cut them springs. You just got to cut them springs out. hate to cut them, but... Yeah. Why? Let's just start hacking the spring away. It's just gonna make it easier to get at that because that's all yeah. gonna go to put the cylinder through anyways. Sure. So, make it liquid. We're jumping around a little bit, but Benny's about to flatten off these cut coils. These actually came off the Cadillac um, front coils when we cut them for the hydraulics and the caddy. But he's putting these Cadillac front coils in the back of the 59, and we're going to use the one ton coils that Hoppo supplied for the uh, front of the 59. So he's just going to take this tail, heat it up, flatten it off so that it sits flat in the pocket.
Okay, so this is what we're about to try. We've got the uh, power balls dead center on the lower perches and uh, the coils up there. Ben did flatten the coil just so it sits a little bit nicer. And so we're gonna lower the car now and just see how it all sits. Make sure it gets low enough and that the uh, power balls and coils sit happy. Would that be happy or hoppy? That's not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys just set it down. Yeah. And you got too much coil? Too much coil. Too much coil. So the snubber too much be. coily coil. We got lots of room between the bump stop and the and the pad. Yeah. So we want to take a look at that, try and figure out how many wraps compressed we need to remove to eliminate that gap. Well, seeing that you nicked that coil uh -huh. when you were doing it, yeah. let's cut it right there. One let's, wrap. That's the, that's let's the side. One, one wrap and then you flatten that toe out again. Yeah. You'll get two and a half. Should maybe? give us or two. at least two about, and a half. About two. Yeah. That will be up to there. Let's do that. Two one, inches. One full wrap. One full wrap gets you two. Okay. Inches. Ish. Sounds good. Eyeballing. Now we have to do no, everything again. All that the the fucking back up again. Four post voice crack. Fuck. Melty, melty.
is in here for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so those donuts are here to isolate that cylinder before we put everything together. Kind of semi-inspired by, uh, by Christian from Cruise World Manufacturing. He's got a sweet situation for this that we just didn't order. <laughs> um, I almost we weren't even We weren't even I thinking almost. about it at the time, but it would have worked perfectly here. So I just used some uh, half-inch nylon. Then he cut them up into little donuts here to uh, isolate that cylinder. And, uh, and next is to weld on the power ball. And then these coil over hydraulics will be done. So it's gonna dual purpose. The coil is gonna center itself on our little donut with the situation and the donut will center this in there. So um, yeah, I guess that's next, right? Power that's, balls? That's right. So okay. we're gonna position the power ball now and uh, we might hang out probably exactly where the spring was. Yeah, just nice and centered. As long as it's nice and centered and and, uh, and that cylinder has clearance above because right now it's quite tight to the side. Um, that's the only uh, thing that we're gonna double check, right? Yeah. And, and if need be, we might have to move this power ball to help angle the cylinder to clear up above, but yeah, we can... it should be fine. It, On, it, it seems like it. it should be fine. On this pad, we could probably sneak it around wherever we want. We might just hug the outside of the pad and keep it centered on the tube. So then that way we get the cylinders uh, to leave a little room for the trunk hinge. Okay, now we're gonna set the car down and uh, kind of watch the springs center themselves on the little donuts in there. And now that they've cut the springs as well, the car should get as low as desired, which is a hammered bump stop in this case. <laughs> well, power just went out. <laughs> Kyle's still working. This Fine. isn't my fault. I'm still gonna have to charge you for this. This is a call up. <laughs> All right. No shit. Do I need to get the no Jenny shit. going or what? Well, why don't we go do some lunch time? Nobody's eating.
All right, update All right. time. Where are we at, Benny? So pump rack is welded. Um, it's ready for paint. Got to drill a couple of holes in the floor to mount it. Right. Uh, we're missing some fittings, so that's going to have to be tomorrow as far as hoses go. Uh, because we're going to go bulkhead fittings. Yeah, we're going to do bulk, bulkhead fittings Explain in the floor. Explain that. What's so bulkhead? So a bulkhead fitting is basically, um, it's like a, a union, but on one end will be, let's say, a JIC hydraulic fitting. It'll go through the floor or a bulkhead, whatever you're gonna put it through, lock it down with a nut, and then it has a second fitting on the other side. So you can pass through something like sheet metal without a grommet, without worrying about it breaking. And now you have an, a hose from the inside and a hose from the outside that are two separate serviceable things. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you're gonna run that so that we don't have any chafing of hoses and you've got uh, lines on the inside, lines on the outside. That's right. So I'm thinking bulkhead fitting here and a bulkhead fitting here, which will be hiding under the pump rack. And then we'll just have a hose kind of creep out, you know, with a 90 fitting instead of straight over here. And that'll just give us uh, a nice clean trunk with no hoses like this or like this, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to leave the trunk as clean as possible, right? Enough to make upholstered panels later or leave room for a speaker box later yeah um but yeah that's uh we're just trying to hide everything underneath awesome so rear cylinders are in they got lots of clearance they're poking through right up front there front cylinders are in um basically now it's just wiring yeah and uh the pump rack is tacked together so 
I'm gonna finish uh, the pump rack. We're gonna get that painted. Yep. And then the next time the pump rack goes in, it can be bolted down. We've got a couple of hole marks here and here, there and there. Basically the pads I made for the pump rack are nice and large to distribute the weight because we're not bolting through to the chassis. Normally if you have a ton of batteries, like there's not as many batteries in this setup. We only have four batteries. It's still a lot of weight, but a lot of guys like to bolt right to the chassis. So you use a piece of square tube and actually weld that to the frame and have your racks go in with the square tube. So that's another way of doing it. We're not hopping this car at all. It's seriously just to lift and lay, yeah. tail drag, you know, just uh, have fun with it. So it it's not gonna see a whole lot of jumping action that would destroy the floor. So we feel confident that it's gonna be fine just um, with large pads, you know, six inch by 12 inch pads distributing the weight onto the sheet metal. The frame is right under there, but we're just gonna locate it with a couple of bolts. Yep. And uh, that should be good. We got lots of really nice, strong body mounts that aren't too sacked all the way around too, so I'm not too worried. Yeah, the trunk floor in this car is virtually rust free, so yeah. we're okay with that. Awesome, so that's where we're at. Rack's basically done. Um, we're just figuring out fittings and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so. I guess the next time we talk to you, we'll have the rack in and painted, yep. and we'll be kind of buttoning up lines. What's the center of this? Why don't we go tight? Take them up when they're built it up. Six inch center. Three and three. Um, so those are for something else, I think. They are. Okay.
So it's painted and we're about to put it in the car. Carl's making pizza, so we're just gonna quickly film this in case he wanted to see it. This is what low riding is all about. All these guys, they come out when we work on cars. I don't see these guys otherwise. <laughs> Roscoe's excited. We got wheels in today. Benny did a bunch of hydraulic line rolling around this morning. Roscoe, you're too excited. You might have to go outside, bud. Roscoe, come here. I know. Andrew's back. Most of this car is pretty much done. Was this the first 60 years of childhood are always the hardest? <laughs> oh my God, Charlie, Mike, what's, what's up? up? Both these guys come out to help today. Basically where the car is at is all the hydraulics are in. So springs are in, hydraulic rams are in, and the whole rack system is in. That's the last thing we did last night. Uh, assembled the rack in the trunk. Got the uh, solenoids mounted to the rack. It's all painted. Um, it's gonna be 24 volt system per side. Popo's two pump kit. Love this kit, love everything about it. And I really like these blocks because they've got symmetrical dump ports. And uh, that allows the system to be so clean, so symmetrical, very, very cool. We've got uh, ground disconnect here um, to turn off the system in case you stick a solenoid. That's like a safety thing that you have to include. Um, yeah, so this is Sunday, day three. Um, the objective for today is to get all the lines in. So after this rack system went in, we made sure we just measured all the lines up so the hydraulic lines can go in. They're made to size now. We're adding bulkhead fittings, which are fittings that go inside the sheet metal in the trunk to allow you to have a line on the inside and a line on the outside so that in case something happens, you don't have to thread them through. There's no chafe point. Um, yeah, they're great for that. So um, yeah, the objective is to get it moving today, get the wheels on it. There's a little bit of modification we have to do to, to uh, some studded adapters to get these knockoffs put on, but there's some 72 spoke chrome wires that are going on it. It's gonna get the car another two inches lower Right now it's sitting about two and a half inches off the frame with uh, with 15 inch wheels and, and big tires on it. So the thing's gonna slam pretty hard. <laughs> All right, that's where we're at. Let's get this done. Thanks a lot, Hoppos. Really appreciate all your support technically as well as uh, knowledge wise on making this kit happen. So uh, we're getting it done. We're just about there. One more day. Oh, those I'm lining up. Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to. 100%. If it's like this, oh, you're fired. Your mental. I couldn't drive the car. No, no. <laughs> That'd be impossible. You just have to scrap it. <laughs> <laughs> Or are you just gonna 
can't stay back. I just need an air chuck. Air chuck? Yeah. Just a little more push. What are those, like 175s? Mm -hmm. Little skinnies? Yeah, 175, 70s. Let's see. Perfect. Make a kapows.
ground plugged in. Okay, they're ready to start bleeding. Yeah. So we're just hitting switches and then cracking the cylinders all the way around, right? Get the air bubbles out of it. Yippers. This is monumental. Monumental. Monumental or just mental. Or just mental. <laughs> Oh, ain't no motors going there. Wired upside down? Or did they get it? Uh, switches wired, right? That's, that's hitting the dumps, isn't it? That's oh, yeah, you're just pressing the wrong way. No, you got dumps, you got solenoids well, hitting on both. Why is this off? Oh. Yeah, what's that? Because we're, we're bleeding around 12 volt. Oh, I see. But is the ground on the other side, so, though? So, we're grounded, powered, right? Yep. Yeah, but... So this is grounded? Yeah, but hey, we've got only got this. one of the motors powered you right got now. That. Isn't that ground? Uh, yes, well, this, is ground, this is ground, ground for 12 volt. It's ground mm -hmm. It's all right. Where does this go? That's, Which motor does it go to? Yeah. Because we, you don't have both motors powered this way. Yeah. There's a test light back there. Yeah. Should be. That should be that this should way. Be. That's here. what we did. So you should No, be. this is for, this goes under. This, this power, mm -hmm. this power goes under. To, to that to that solenoid bank. Okay, that's to this oh, motor. Oh, so here we go. So front is switch. that front is that battery set. Yeah, that was the problem. Either way, the sh either way, so one of the pumps should go. We should yeah, both. We, one, one what we need to do is go. move that ground over to here, and that'll that'll put that set live to twelve volts, right? No. Either way, one of these motors should go. <laughs> well, I hit rear and it'll go. I bet. You only try to hit one switch. Yeah, hit the other switch. Yeah, tap, yeah, tap the yeah. rear. That's what I'm. Yeah. 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 See, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the rear powered, right? So we'd have to take this lead and go over to that battery to do this. Right. Or we bleed the rear pump, move this ground to this battery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. That comes off there. So bleed the rear. Or yeah, whatever well, first. Yeah, we'll bleed the rear first. We need to keep this 12 volts live for the switches. Too. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So we can. T oh, we're so not going to reach. Relax, then. <laughs> You're not oh, going to reach. Need the well, this this can stay at 24 volts. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can just hook everything back up and just run the ground. You're just trying not to bleed on 24. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's just. So you because want to leave, leave the nothing in the pump head. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That it's it'll, it'll, it'll spin the it'll spin the pump head too fast. Right. It could eat, eat the gears up or eat. eat gotcha. The, uh, without up. without having any yeah. fluid in there. Yeah. Should be eleven sixteenths, I believe, if you ran three twenty. Yeah. Three you got eleven sixteenths wrench. Oh, eleven sixteenths on the back. Really? Right. And three. Yeah. Usually. Three quarter. Uh, Mopos, they were dash six with a three quarter inch wrench. Oh, okay. These ones from Laura called 11 Yeah, so that's the 11 16 I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> the rest of that will work out. I figured you were thinking of that, but I might as well say it. <laughs> okay. Give her a couple licks, Benny. Yeah. You're happening in the back. Oh, cause... Oh, what's happening? Hit it. Hit a switch, bro. Are, the, are you bleeding both cylinders? No, go ahead, man. It's, 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 they're, they're black. Are done. What? Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, get no way. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shock. What's up? Yeah, that's so that's that's shock. just on 12 volt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, okay. Benny. So, okay. Back is lifted. Oh, drag racing. Hang on, Benny. Uh, Benny. Yes. Hang on. This low rider thing. It's not cool anymore. <laughs> Nobody does it. It's just easier for you if you do it with both hands. Yeah. You know, like doing them both at yep. the same time so you know what you're doing. Exactly. As opposed to two of us messing around. Let's see. I can see. <coughs> 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 
All right, so, uh, I tried to match the slowdown, so dump it. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. Do it again. Right away? Yep, yep. no. Do you like that speed or you want to go a little slower? Can I try it? Let me just try it. Oh, that's good. Good? Yep. Okay. okay. Nice and okay. even. Back is done. So we can switch the wiring out now. Okay. So, <coughs> then we got it squashed. Nope. nope. We just have to put everything back to normal here. Oh, Except for this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's the bleed the front. Think... Front or three cord? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's this one. Okay. And I'll hold, I'll hold the cable in here just so it doesn't fuck off. Yeah. Here, I've got, yeah, I got, we got some rags here. We got four rags? Yeah. I got a KFC bag on one side. Rags work. I am positive. Yeah. Alright. Tap your other switch, Benny. Okay, you're ready to bleed the front? Are you cracked? Yep. Literally. There it is. There it is. Get there. Hang on. Okay. Like a wet fart. Rick is determined not to spill a drop. Uh, it's more of a case of I've seen guys loosen them way off, and all of a sudden it just rips the threads right off the Oh, thing. oh yeah, yeah, that's bad. Oh man. And, and also remember, <laughs> don't top it up when it's teed up. Yes, don't top it. Don't yes. top, don't do, top it yes, up when it's teed up. Do not pull a Scotty dog. Yes. <laughs> One more. Alright, I'm doing tiny little dots. How many? Four. Here's the tape. Four. Okay, I'm gonna sit in here like that. Like you're on it? Yeah. Yeah! Pretty quick, but 24 volts. It is. It's the last one! Stuff it into the fender. Oh, uh, there we go. There we go, Rick. Rick gets it. <clears throat>
Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. That is just full pancake. <laughs> yeah. Press I like pancakes. Alright, hold them down for a second. Corners down the bottom. How much frame clearance, Carl? Like half inch. <laughs> Perfect. Which means this this driver's side exhaust pipe. Right? It's Whoa. an inch and a half underground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're looking for exhaust manifolds when you break that one. I don't want to. Oh break my out. goodness. Did you see how low the frame's on there? <laughs> she looks good. <laughs> Wait till it gets off the lid. Yeah. Well done, boys. Right, right, you. Right, All right, Benny, get in there and bring it up. Yeah. You. You. Oh, come on, that was weak. There we go. Uh, lift, lift the front up first. I just want to see him lift it. You! Just tap, like, ah. just tap. Oh, this is this, this is that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah! Hey, hit the front. Oh. Where are you coming from? Oh. Oh, I don't know. Uh, hit the front to get on. Wow. Goes down. Goes down pretty nice. Yeah. Huh? Oh my. I'm never getting out of this car. <laughs> never. <laughs> Hit it. I'd like to show you the junk in the trunk. That's about how high I'll go. Nice.
you. You're welcome. All right. How you feeling, Vinny? Luckiest man alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty stoked on the Buick? Very, very stoked on the Buick. Yeah. That is awesome, man. I mean, three days. We went, yeah. we did it in three days. That was the goal. And, uh, and it honestly wasn't really that bad, you know? And, no. And I think it's because, like, so many people came to help during the three yeah. days. I, like, we probably saw 20 of our friends come together yeah. for this three-day build. And, uh, and that's kind of like, that's what low riding is all about, right? I would say so, yeah. You know? Yeah. We're, we're connected because of these cars. We all have different lives and stuff. But, um, but some of those guys, like, yeah. you, you know because of low riding. You know because of working on cars together. And, you know, you go help those guys with their cars and they help with your cars. And, like, that's, that's what's so cool about it. Right? Yeah, you know, you're not you're not in it alone. It's a it's a network. It's a family, and and I think I, that's pretty sweet. I think that describes um, car clubs in general. Yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta have this group of people that you get together with. That you know, I mean, we all know exactly how everybody builds. We've all been going to each other's shops for a decade or decades. Yeah, and we all we all know what everybody wants to do and how they're going to do it. So when we come together, it's like a pretty well lubricated machine. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're lucky too in, in our, in our circles is kind of like everybody can kind of do a little bit of everything, but everybody's kind of got their thing. Yeah. You know, like you're saying, like Adam came in, he's like, what's an Adam specific job I have, I, I can do. And, uh, and he came in, he just like got all the wiring done, like, yeah. perfect, like right now. You yeah. Know? All the control wiring on the car was just instantly done perfectly heat shrinked and yeah, glued yeah. everything the exact length that's just andrew's just like laying out all the you know the suspension and the and the hydraulics with rick and like those guys want to uh you know make the final call on on where the you know the coils are going to be yeah. where the hydraulics are going to sit and, and yeah and all that like the power balls where everything's going to go and uh i tried to stick to like welding and fabricating a little bit yeah you know, machining machine some spacers to get those wheels on we yeah. had to uh you know, build a little bit of the rack. Kyle built the battery boxes, you know. Yeah. It was, uh, it was really sweet. You know, I, I, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. And I think that um, another thing I wanted to touch on with this little kind of like after hang is that um, to not be afraid of doing hydraulics on a car yeah. because that's right. There's, there's like this thing I find that a lot of people think, well, hydraulics, because it's a, it's a hydraulic ram that it, that it rides so stiff and you're just like kind of ruining your car or whatever. And that's, that's not true at all. <laughs> you know, yeah. like hydraulics, the way they're designed to work, um, they ride as if it's kind of like a stock vehicle because you get to choose what coil spring is in it. Some cars might ride, ride a little bit stiffer because they've got a little bit stiffer spring in it. That's right. But you can still have shocks and stock coils if you, even if you want. Um, in this particular scenario, yeah. we put the, you know, front coils in the back to, yeah. because the front coils are heavier than rear coils typically because they, they take the weight of the engine. So now that you're adding four batteries, two hydraulic pumps, yeah. you're adding a bunch of weight in the trunk. You do want a stiffer coil to handle that weight. So that's why you take the front coils and you put them in the back. Hoppo supplied some uh, one ton coils for the front to stiffen up the front a little bit because the coils are much shorter as well. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a pretty good riding scenario, you know, and, 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 um, and you could go to a stiffer coil. Um, you know, some guys do like, if you're going to hop it, you, you do need a stiffer coil because you're taking that weight and trying to, trying to hop it. But, um, but you can do it and just have like a car that cruises, right? Like yeah. that's what this build is about is just, it's just, it's a lift and lay. Like we're not, gonna hop the car it's just like a front up and down rear up and down yeah um cool way to do it and it's all coils like on That's a coil it. spring car the fabrication of in, in, installing that is is really not that bad at all yeah yeah you hear guys talking about cutting up a car for hydraulics why would you ruin a car like that and i feel like that is a little bit of a misperception as well a misconception because if you're throwing coils back in the car especially stock stock coils you don't have to cut the lower control arm to put in a bag mount you're just putting the coil spring right into the lower coil pocket 
just like factory. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of cutting and messing around with anything. It's, uh, it's really nice that way. And my favorite part of a hydraulic setup is since you're literally just moving the upper spring mount or the upper coil pocket, um, you ride the same at any height. So if your car rides beautifully at whatever, three inches off the ground, it's going to ride beautifully at two. It's going to ride beautifully at four. Um, whereas I find with air ride, you, you ride, air ride feels different, right? It's, it, it can ride very well. It can ride very rough, but, uh, you almost have this magic height where the car sits perfect. Hydraulics is any height. It's going to drive just as nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I do agree with that with, with air. There's a lot of variables where you mount it you know, and, and all that right. kind of thing. But typically because it's just a coil in place of a coil that used to be there, right. you're just adjusting, you know, where the mount is. Yeah. Right. Like you say. Um, and that's the same principle that I applied with, with my, um, hydraulic hot rod pickup truck. Yeah. Right. It's just the hydraulics are there to change the location of the spring, you know, yeah. and the spring still does the work. Your shocks still do the work. So your ride still depends on the springs and shocks you use. It does not that's right. depend on whether or not it has or has not hydraulics. Um, and, uh, and the way that it's set up in this car as well, just to go over it, it's, it's coil over hydraulic in the back, which means that the coil sits above the, um, the bottom of the hydraulic cylinder and has the weight of the car on the coil spring and the hydraulic cylinder. Then the hydraulic cylinder is um, power ball connected to the rear axle. Right. Right. So like that's yeah. where your lift is. And then, um, your coil spring is always riding between the hydraulic cylinder and the body. And yeah. whereas the front, the hydraulic cylinder does not move. And the top of the coil spring is at the hydraulic cylinder so that it pushes that down. So that's coil under right. hydraulic in the front coil over hydraulic in the back. Right. Um, it's a very simple way of installing it that really doesn't require much. And especially in this car, it was mostly just drilling holes in the um, center of the coil pockets. Yeah. Right? You know, we added a little piece of Teflon, uh, not Teflon, but uh, but nylon that I had around just to help isolate the cylinder so that well, as they're sliding through the um, hole saw opening in the bridge above the rear axle, that it doesn't squeak. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, you build a rack and you install it. It's really, it's not a whole lot. Yeah. And how, how Hoppo set up the pumps. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about that. They're amazing. It's the quickest 24 volt setup I've ever, I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I, I hear a lot of guys who just like, no, I'd rather not do 24 volts. I think I'd like 36. I'd like it to be a little quicker. And I feel like what I got is a setup that acts like it's a 36 volt setup. I like that everything is low voltage and fairly simple for me. Um, you know, cause my skill level yeah, is right up mean, there. You're not hopping it. Yeah. Like, it's like not going to hop. I like don't it, have any frame reinforcements, still, nothing. Yeah. It yeah. still gets up quick. It, it works really nice. Yeah. You know, it goes just as fast as you'd really want it to go. It's perfect. Yeah. 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 I couldn't be happier with everything they sent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other, the other thing that I really liked about the kit, like obviously it's a great kit and it works really well, Yeah. but, uh, the blocks that are on the pumps that allow the dump ports to be symmetrical, um, uh, for me seeing that I would have not known to maybe upgrade to that, but now that I see how that lines up right. with the pumps being so symmetrical, I think it's just a really, really <clears throat> clean way to go. So, um, I really like those blocks that allow the extra dumps on both sides. I think yeah. that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we stays to... nice and low. You don't have to mount everything up top. Yeah. We were able to hide the check valves and everything alongside the pumps. Mm -hmm. So basically all we have is the, <clears throat> is like the, the outlet port on the top teeing off into the first two hoses and then coming back down it. I really like how they look. Yeah. I don't know if, um, if many guys set their, pumps up that way but uh but either way it's it just worked out so well i just love it yeah yeah i think that uh um another thing i wanted to mention is that we also were watching the hoppo's youtube videos um on explaining the um 
like all the different parts and how they flow to make sure that we fully understood, you know, where the check valves go, um, the dump flow, because yeah. the dumps have three ports. So it's important to, um, to look at that. And, and don't be scared of doing a hydraulic system because there's so much technical support online for these kits that uh, it was quite simple. Like it's, I think anybody could really do this by watching those technical support videos. So I'm gonna link all that stuff in the description, um, Hoppo's website, and uh, as well as their YouTube channel so that you can see how easy the <coughs> install is um, for those kits. And uh, I just wanna thank Hoppo's as well yeah. because they did send us this kit and uh, we reached out to them for support and, and they happily sent this kit out and helped us along the way with, uh, with the tech behind it as well. So thank you very much, Hoppo's. Really appreciate working with you guys. And uh, they've also created a discount code for any Make It Custom subscriber. It is Make It Custom, all one word, all capital letters, and you'll get a discount on their website if you do need to put a kit into something. And uh, I just encourage you all to just give it a try. If it's something you've been interested in, it can be a really fun, simple upgrade to make your vehicle yeah. so much fun. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and, you know, you'll meet like-minded people in the low riding community. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's just a great culture and community to, yeah. uh, to play cars with. So <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. Make it custom, everybody. Really appreciate you guys. And, um, yeah, we're going to catch you on the next one. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. And if you want to be part of the custom crew, five bucks a month, there's a uh, button at the end of this video. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.